last night's protest in Ferguson not as violent and chaotic as you just heard as the first night. But we spoke to one journalist who came under attack. Griff Jenkins is live in Ferguson with more on that. Griff. Oh God, shouldn't do this, man. We don't want this. Hi, Kimberly. That's right. We're down on Canfield in front of where Michael Brown was shot. And last night, Marcus DiPaola, a freelance journalist, was attacked. And some of the residents here are upset. The neighborhood residents are upset because they believe outsiders perpetuated this. Here's what happened. Here's what happened last night. Take a look. I was actually shooting a stand-up package for the uh, morning shows. Uh, and I was crouched down right here. And uh, suddenly behind me, I hear uh, a lot of shouting get out of here, stop filming, um, and turn the light off. So uh, uh, we start walking away as quick as we can. Emily got in the driver's seat, and uh, she tried to close the, close the door. And as she was trying to close the door, they pulled it back open and grabbed her arm. And uh, someone pulled out a gun and pointed it to her forehead and said, give me the key. They smashed the back window first. Then they smashed this. And Emily was sitting right here. Um, we were, she was fighting over the door with this guy, um, the guy with the gun, and um, my videographer, the one with the camera, was sitting right here, and uh, I had a lot of stuff in this car. I had a, uh, a $5,000 um, camera lens combination uh, sitting by my feet, and also a Kevlar vest, and if they got that Kevlar vest out, there's somebody, there's a bad guy walking around with a Kevlar vest now. Hey, Kimberly, the situation is still fluid here. One of the things people were upset with is that the police were not here last night. The residents are upset that all this has happened, and we're going to leave here. We'll check in with you later. All right, we see that Griff is getting uh, some trouble there, as you see. Things still very tense in the community, people being hostile, even to reporters who are trying to cover the story and tell their tale. All right, Griff, we'll check back with you later, perhaps. And now we are finally hearing directly from Officer Darren Wilson, and he spoke with ABC News, and he described the moments leading up to when he pulled the trigger. I said, hey, come here for a minute. And that's when he turned and said, what the f*** are you going to do about it? And slammed my door shut on me. For the first time, Officer Darren Wilson retelling the fateful events from just moments before he killed Michael Brown. He, he threw the first punch? Yes. He threw the first one and hit me in the uh, left side of my face. Because, you know, some of the witnesses have said that they saw you trying to pull him into the car. That would be against every training ever taught to any law enforcement officer. Bruises from those punches seen in these pictures provided to the grand jury. Detail after detail, the officer's account of the events, nearly identical to what he told the grand jury. I said, I said, get back or I'm going to shoot you. And then his response, immediately, he grabbed the top of my gun. And when he grabbed it, he said, you're too much of a to shoot me. And while he's doing that, I can feel his hand trying to come over my hand and get inside the trigger guard and try and shoot me with my own gun. According to Officer Wilson's account, that's when he fires the first shots at Brown, shattering the patrol car's windows, sending Michael Brown running from the vehicle. Officer Wilson gets out, ready to pursue. He turned and faced me, and as he does that, his right hand immediately goes into his waistband, and his left hand is a fist at his side, and he starts charging me. What did you think when you saw that? I didn't know. I mean, my initial thought was, is there a weapon in there? Even though he hadn't pulled something out earlier when he was confronting you. Yeah, it was still just the unknown. An unknown that leads Wilson to pull the trigger. I gave myself another mental check. I, you know, can I shoot this guy? You know, can't, legally, can I? And the question that I answered myself was, I have to, if I don't, he will kill me if he gets to me. And unrest still in Ferguson tonight. We go back to Griff Jenkins who joins us once again. Griff, you're in the car. What happened moments ago? Kimberly, I apologize to our viewers. It was a little hectic there. The residents in Canfield, that location we were at, was where the Michael Brown Memorial is. We were simply reporting the story, but it proves that what happened last night, and countless stories we've heard from other journalists who have been here this week, is that the media is not welcome. They are very... Um, uh, they don't like us uh, down here. They believe we're not telling a true narrative. We're only telling a true narrative. One of the points I was telling them we wanted to make was that the residents here feel like the police are not responding, whether it's a business owner or people that live in the neighborhoods. And simply stating that, I think they just didn't want cameras 
period in that neighborhood. And as you saw, the situation was beginning to heat up. Tempers have been flaring since that decision on Monday night. So we safely wanted to get our crew out of there. We're going to relocate Kimberly in a different okay. location and come back to you a little bit later. All right. Well, keep us posted. And I know our colleague Steve Harrigan also experienced some similar encounters yesterday. So things still very tense in Ferguson tonight. Griff, thank you.